ACL tears radiological diagnosis. The anterior crochet ligament is a strong band of tissue in the center of the knee. It prevents anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. The mechanism of injury is usually a non-contact pivoting injury. As the ACL tears, the patient feels a pop and a deep pain in the knee. The patient usually feels immediate swelling and the knee is usually filled with blood. This occurs due to tear of the middle genicular artery. On examination, the patient will have a quadriceps avoidance gait. Enlockment test is the most sensitive test to diagnose ACL tear. The test is done with the knee bent to about 20 to 30 degrees. Pull the tibia anteriorly and posteriorly against the femur. If the ACL is ruptured, the ACL will be lax and the examination will feel softer with no end point. The tibia can be pulled forward more than normal and that is called anterior translation. Radiological studies. The ACL tear is usually seen alone or in combination with other injuries. On the x-ray you can see anterior crochet ligament avulsion. Avulsion of a piece of bone from the tibial eminence anteriorly. The avulsion can be seen on the AP and the lateral x-rays. The ACL avulsion fracture may be an isolated injury or it may sometimes be associated with other injuries and fractures, such as tibial plateau fractures. Tibial spine fractures in children mimics ACL avulsion fractures in adult. c -gon fracture indicates torn ACL. c -gon is a lateral capsular avulsion fracture. How about the MRI? You can see the proximal anterior crochet avulsion. The axial view MRI is used to evaluate the proximal ACL avulsion. An empty notch sign or an empty wall sign indicates a torn ACL. You will see an empty notch sign on the MRI and that means there is avulsion of the proximal attachment or the femoral attachment of the ACL. The sagittal view of the MRI will show disruption of the ACL fibers. MRI shows non-visible fibers. MRI may show non continuous fibers. MRI show the proximal ACL fibers to be dangled and the distal fibers to be dropped due to complete disruption of the ACL. How about the bone bruises? ACL tear may cause bone bruises laterally on the middle of the femoral condyle and the posterior aspect of the tibia laterally. How do you know it is on the lateral side? Look at the fibula. The fibula is lateral. And look at the pattern of bone marrow edema seen on the lateral view and the AP view of the MRI, which will indicate an ACL tear.
the lateral femoral notch sign. It is an impaction fracture of the lateral femoral sulcus terminalis. It can be seen on the lateral X-ray or on the sagittal MRI. Suspect impaction fracture and ACL tear when the lateral sulcus depth is greater than 2 mm. How about the arcuate fracture? The arcuate fracture is a horizontally oriented fracture of the fibular styloid process, the attachment site of the arcuate ligament complex. It can be associated with injury of the ACL, the PCL, and the posterolateral corner. It's probably more associated with PCL than ACL. It is an avulsion of the fibular head that indicates the posterolateral corner is involved. Arcuate sign should be recognized as a significant injury. Sometimes the avulsed piece of bone is too small and the injury can be missed. Failure to diagnose it may result in failure of future fixation of the cruciate ligaments. Because the posterolateral corner instability was not diagnosed and treated properly. Acute ACL injury may be associated with lateral meniscus injury. Chronic ACL injury may be associated with medial meniscus injury. In the ACL deficient knee, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus provides the secondary restraint to the anterior tibial translation. This added stress on the posterior horn of the medial meniscus may cause the medial meniscus to be injured. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.